our keynote speaker for today. He has been gaining experience with nonviolent communication for about 16 years now, since 2004. And he's a trainer and gives regular um, coaching, mediation, and also workshops. And we will record the session, as I mentioned, and we will upload it on YouTube. And if there will occur any questions which might be too private, um, we have also the opportunity to cut them out. And um, as we do not live stream the session, we have the um, possibility to edit uh, the video afterwards. So don't worry about that. And uh, Thomas will give an input of about 30 minutes. And afterwards, we will have time for discussion, 30 to 40 minutes. And um, if you would like to ask questions, you can write them into the chat window or you can raise your hand and then you can speak out also via microphone if you want. So now I would like to give the stage to Thomas. Yeah, thanks a lot, Pauline. I feel very uh, honored to be here uh, with all of you and being invited to, to give a presentation on, on nonviolent communication. The topic which is really close to my heart, as you heard, for, for 16 years already. So, and I like to start with, um, yeah, I feel really, who am I really sitting in Germany um, in some affluent, uh, peaceful and democratic country to, to really talk to you or give any advice to people all over the world in very sit difficult situations, I, I suppose, very often, which I probably don't even have a clue about. So <clears throat> I decided that I, that I don't want to talk, uh, that I don't want to teach anything <laughs> because that's, that's not my position somehow. I, I like to get into dialogue and I like to share some of my passion for nonviolent communication because I also think that's something which which is really yeah able to change relationships and 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 change uh, our attitude towards ourselves and towards others and might contribute to to peaceful solutions or to better solutions in many different contexts so I love to present something about my my passion and uh, I'm glad to respond to any questions, even if they arise in between in the, in the presentation I prepared. Please don't, don't hesitate to write them uh, in the chat or kind of uh, show up that you, that you would like to ask something. We can kind of keep this as, as much a dialogue as you want, really. So I'm open for that. So... Yes, my mm, as I said before, I'm I'm uh, located in the south of Germany in Ravensburg, um, and I'm doing, as Pauline said, lots of things. My 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 life is kind of my my working life is based on nonviolent communication, doing different things like basically workshops, but mediation and and coaching and so on. So. I got to know Marshall Rosenberg, the founder, like, yeah, 16 years ago, I, w I went to a nine-day workshop, which was the first workshop in NVC, which I actually did. And it, I would, it's not the least to say it somehow changed my life because all the topics which, which kind of um, interested me since that time came up in this workshop already. And I think one of the basic things is that I really didn't know um, how much I need empathy or how much I need uh, like to be listened to. And I didn't have a clue what, what, what listening really means and what listening can really can kind of how you can advance your, your skill in, in listening. That's one of the things. So there's, there's one, one book in Germany which is called kind of um, I hear something you don't say, so I think you can hear a lot in what people say, uh, what they don't really talk about, so you can listen between lines and so on. So that's one of the major things which, which was really very, very um, yeah, life 
changing for me to to go on this uh, um, path of yeah learning to to deepen my listen more and listening skills more and more so that's the that's the pre word now I start uh, a little presentation I don't know exactly how long it takes I think it should be half an hour approximately but but as I said, like whenever you have a question or want to add something, uh, just write it in the chat and, and I see if I can kind of react directly. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, it's the 6th of February today, nonviolent communication. Um, I mentioned him already, uh, like the founder of NVC, nonviolent communication is Marsha B. Rosenberg, who is an American who died 2015. And I think on the website uh, of his organization, which he founded in the 80s sometime, there's one sentence which kind of uh, shows the scope of the NVC work. It's, it's currently done in over 65 countries, touching the lives of hundreds of thousands of people around the world. So it's really become a big um, movement or many people are inspired. And I think especially in the fields of mediation, coaching, <coughs> facilitation and new work, and the vision behind it's a really rather big vision, I think. Um, which is hardly possible to imagine that it's that it's ever be possible but but sometimes yeah it's possible to have really big visions and his vision was that everyone values everyone's basics basic human needs and he called it uh, nonviolent communication because he was uh, <clears throat> he was in, in influenced and inspired by yeah Gandhi talking about nonviolence and and that's one of the things I find yeah uh, in Gandhi's work I find uh, very beautifully said that it's about kind of putting love or kind of love and truth together that there's a lot of strength when love and truth uh, get together and as Gandhi said there are two sides of the same coin he even said and the second person which which inspired um, Marsha Rosenberg very much was ah first of all just a few few keywords for uh, uh, Gandhi like his four principles were truth nonviolence welfare of all and peaceful protest so I think one gets an idea what 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 kind of nonviolent nonviolence and and, and nonviolent communication wants to wants to achieve really. Many of the things are said here already, and the second man who inspired uh, Marsha Rosenberg very much, especially in the sixties, where 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 Rosenberg really started his work, uh, was was Martin Luther King with his uh, famous I, I have a dream so it's so it's basically something where he dreams where he wanted to unite people and at the same time he wanted to do something and this with nonviolent means and I kind of put down his six principles of uh, non nonviolence and would just want to mention a few like the second says that nonviolence seeks to win friendship and understanding which basically means like really making making anybody everybody a friend instead of an enemy or something and trying to really understand uh, the other one and uh, that nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice not people we will come back to this later so it's so it's really talking the truth but not uh, fighting against people or against other human beings and i and i think that's that's easily said and i think at the same time nonviolent communication gives some idea some some um, things how you can put this into practice really 
And nonviolence, that's the fifth principle, chooses love instead of hate. Okay, that's just a few of them. I will kind of, uh, I will put this into some PDF as a presentation so you can have this afterwards. And there are a few famous quotes of Marsha Rosenberg, which I think um, put very, very pointed, uh, very, very um, in a nutshell what, what he wanted to achieve. And the one sentence he, he uh, used a lot was connection before correction. So whenever I want to, to say something that, that he could do something um, better or something different, his claim would be that it needs a certain kind of human connection before this is possible. And that has two sides. It's connection to myself first, like that's, that's where self-empathy is needed and to express myself in a particular way, which is, yeah, which creates connection and which is connection to other human beings through, through, the, mean of, uh, through the means of empathy. And he's got a very, yeah, one of my, yeah, the second <laughs> favorite of the quotes where he says, like, every criticism, judgment, diagnosis, and expression of anger is the tragic expression of an unmet, unmet need. Also tragic, he means tragic expression. It's an expression of a need. That's the first thing he says in this, of course. And it's a tragic expression often because if you kind of express it directly, it's quite often not, 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 not very well heard. And, and most of the time people won't really kind of, you, you won't really get what you, what, you would, what you would like to ask for because instead of saying what you want, you basically criticize someone, judge someone as, I don't know, enemy basically as, as, uh, as something, someone who is doing something wrong. So the basic... Uh, the basic uh, starting point for Marsha Rosenberg were kind of uh, were needs. So, like like we said, like like um, that there are human common human needs. Yeah, basic human needs. For example, physical security, autonomy, freedom, respect, love, empathy, meaning, support, and many others. Yeah, it's really about putting these into the center or making, making these the focus and putting them at the center of communication. How do we communicate about what we need instead of blaming someone or kind of accusing someone of something? And the claim is that all human beings have the same needs. Yeah, everybody has the same needs, basically. That's, that's what we share as, 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 as humanity. So, and and that's, his, that's his starting point, really, to make this the focus of exchange and dialogue and uh, communication, basically, with myself and with others. In nonviolent communication, there are some uh, basic, basic distinctions. And I think the, the really most fundamental distinction is the distinction between needs and strategies. Yeah, but between uh, needs like, like these, like, like, uh, like for example, meaning, yeah, which is a very abstract word. There's no concrete uh, substance to it. And there are many strategies to fulfill a need. Yeah? For example, a strategy can be, I can find meaning in my work. The work that I'm doing can, can uh, fulfill this need. Or being a parent can be very meaningful for me. Or giving can be very meaningful. And there are many more individually very different uh, strategies or ways of fulfilling needs. So saying this so, so there's on one hand side there's this there's this we've got so much in common all the same needs and as human beings we've got very depending on culture and so on we've got very different strategies to 
to look after them or to and and that and of course there might be strategies uh, which 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 are harmful to other people so even if whatever people do they they try to to fulfill needs of course that might lead to conflict because someone might say like that strategy that way uh, i don't like but i'm and then nonviolent communication would 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 kind of start by saying okay i accept your needs but i disagree with the way you you are uh, trying to to achieve or to fulfill your your needs and that's the basic thing which is um yeah necessary in conflicts uh, dealing with conflicts with nonviolent communication is based on kind of uh, putting this uh, differentiation into into work really to yeah the second thing which is um, important in nonviolent communication is uh, feelings like feelings and that's the that's the claim um, hypothesis basically in, in nonviolent communication which you can kind of look for yourself if this makes sense for you like the basic uh, feelings anger sadness fear and happiness the hypothesis is whenever i've got comfortable feelings um, it's a sign of needs have been met whenever i encounter within myself or within others kind of uncomfortable uncomfortable feelings then some needs are not met yeah if i'm angry most probably i can find something within myself where where some needs of mine are not met and i called it comfortable and uncomfortable because i don't i don't like the uh, positive and negative feelings because i think kind kind of all all feelings are are uh, yeah the same and valuable and and useful as signals for example yeah ah of course there's lots of different uh, feelings which different words for it and um depending on the intensity of feeling i just put this chart to get a little kind of overview of course if you if you talk about feelings there's there's many different there's there's much more vocabulary than than talking about fear and sadness and so on but it's basically yeah a lower or higher uh, intensity of particular feelings another aspect of nonviolent communication is uh, what we call request request something to fulfill needs also if we came closer to what we need or what someone else needs it has always these two sides then of course it's good to 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 make it or to bring it into life and to bring it into life and to to get something i need and to ask for something i need um, this is what we call request in nonviolent communication and if I, if I, for example, need support, I can ask someone, can you please read this email and tell me what you think about it? We describe requests as they, they need to be concrete, doable, positive. So I don't say what I don't want, I say what I want. And they need to be negotiable, to be requests. And we, we separate them or kind of differentiate them to uh, demands yeah where i don't where i'm not open to different ways of uh, fulfilling my needs and uh, what i call wishful thinking yeah there, there are many many wishful thinking around for example in team meetings or something i, I i've kind of whenever whenever i attend team meetings or something i, I look out for for really concrete doable requests and, and quite often there's wishful thinking in the room. Could anybody, uh, or things you can't do, yeah? Please, can't we be more polite to each other? So it's not really concrete. What can I do? What does it mean really to be polite or something? Do I kind of speak with a, with a, a, 
softer voice. Or, so nonviolent communication reminds us to be very concrete in what we, what we request for or, or what, what kinds of requests we have to other people. And the fourth aspect uh, in this basic model is called observation, which is the trigger for feelings. Yeah, whatever I, whenever I have feelings, there's something, something happening, which we call observation, which is just the facts, what the camera can see or hear. And uh, the differentiation is here towards evaluation. So, yeah. On one hand side, there's the facts, and on the other hand side, there's all the judgments and my own evaluations. And uh, Marshall or nonviolent communication, we don't say that there's anything wrong with making evaluations or making judgments, as long as, if, as, as, long as we don't mix observations uh, with evaluations. That's really important because my evaluations have to do with my needs, basically. Yeah, they're an expression of my needs and I can trace them back through uh, means of communication and, 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 and empathy. I come, I'm, I'm able to come closer to what do I really wish, what do I need really. But um, yeah, the reminder is here in this, in this basic model not to mix the observation with evaluations. And I think that's, that's pretty common in, in, in journalism. So that's probably nothing new to, to many of you. And it's still, I mean, it's, it's really not so easy. Okay, so that's the basic model already, which is sometimes also called four steps, which I don't particularly like because I think it's not very helpful to actually talk or kind of orient my my conversations on four steps, um, unless I really might be in a very critical, conflictual situation, and and both conflict partners agree on let's 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 do it with uh, the NVC steps, and we start to kind of get some clarification in the conflict, and and then we can really kind of do one step after the other, or kind of mostly yeah to see where we are most of the times we probably start with the feelings because that's what what's 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 on top first and then we see what actually happened so the observation and then we we look together hey what is what is really needed okay there are two sides of self empathy there are two sides of nvc one side is self empathy so you can use this model to basically ask yourself what do i feel in this moment and what do I wish for or what do I need in this moment as the basic focus what we understand when we talk about self-empathy really looking at within myself what is what is going on within myself with my body with my emotions and what, what are my needs really basically so that's this process of self-empathy, which I find really we are very helpful for many situations where I, where I, yeah, starting from sometimes not even understanding myself, why am I so angry, why am I reacting like this, and then mostly um, afterwards, uh, I try it, of course, as quickly <laughs> in this situation as possible, which is sometimes I succeed and Many times I've got no clue, so I need some some reflection afterwards where I see, hey, what what do I feel if I think about this situation, and what was I, what, what was my need really, and perhaps there was a request as well. So that's the side self empathy, and then there's the side empathy. Yeah, I'm I'm turning to the other. How do you feel? How do, uh, what what do you wish for? Uh, do you need this or that? So, so that's the kind of um, that's the kind of process where we all kind of this one can see this creates a process of I'm I'm turning the attention to myself to my side, and and I'm turning the attention to the other side. Okay, coming back to this um, basic one of the quotes I. I like the most, which is every criticism, judgment, diagnosis, and expression of anger is the tragic expression of an unmet need. So 
it, it, it kind of shows a little bit the way about the, the work or the, the thing, the way nonviolent communication can, can help us. Gilberto, uh, kind of you, you mentioned how it's possible to deal with insults, for example, yeah? And, and I want to um, go on with a few examples. I want to start with an example of if I criticize or judge myself, for example, I judge or criticize someone as he is a criminal, yeah? Then self-empathy would be the process really to look what are my feelings in this moment? So what, are, what do I wish? What do I wish for? What are my needs really? So I turn instead of kind of going outside and labeling someone or kind of diagnosing someone or criticizing someone really to turn to myself first and to ask myself uh, what's, what's, what's going on within me. So, um, and I think only after we've done some kind of uh, self-empathy process and uh, by doing this somehow taking responsibility for what I'm uh, feeling and what I'm needing, then I can make myself transparent. I can say what I want. I can say what I need. I can make, uh, I can kind of ask uh, particular things, making requests. So that's the, uh, and I think the, the more, the, the closer I have kind of come to myself and to find really what's, what's alive in me and what do I need really instead from, from this first, first uh, expression of someone is a criminal, kind of, of, of course, one can see immediately when we start a, a dialogue or a communication where I'm closer already to myself, that this will be a very different uh, conversation. Or I hear criticism or judgment, like you said, we get insults or, or whatever. You, you hear something, you're called enemy and so on. So, for example, someone says, that's just fake news what you're doing. Yeah, how do I react to that? Yeah, how do I react to that? And, of course, if I'm able to, I can ask myself and I can, I, I can put my attention to, to the following questions, which are, yeah, what is this human being feeling who's kind of saying this? Yeah, what is this human being wishing for? What's this human being's needs? Yeah, what does this human being need? And perhaps even is there a request within this first statement or criticism? And, of course, um, I can only empathize with another human being when I got enough self-empathy for myself. So perhaps I'm not really able to, to turn to the other side because, and then I come back to the first uh, thing, which is like when I feel, uh, when I criticize, perhaps, um, because most probably my first reaction will be that I criticize the one who is saying this, who's saying uh, uh, that's just fake news. Someone will come up in my mind. Um, so I have to do this process first. Like, how do I feel when I hear this? And when I've, come, when I've gone through that, then I will be more, probably much more open to see uh, the human being behind uh, the words I've just read or I've just heard. So that's all. Sounds very easy. Sounds very helpful. And... I know, of course, in many situations, that's, that's a real challenge. <laughs> but at the same time, for me, again, again, and it's, it's, it's at least a way to get out of particular uh, situations. And, and if it's not working in a moment, I can come back to someone and, and kind of clarify things within myself and, and, and come back and, and kind of start a, a dialogue in you or kind of a conversation in you. Um, yeah, perhaps like some concluding things. What does it mean uh, to live NVC for me? 
and I think the first thing is for me really like this this model as well uh, reminds us to see everybody as human being with equal basic human needs so what what so whatever people do whatever people say there's always a human being in front of me or kind of has written something or said something which is an expression of 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 basic human needs and so i'm 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 trying and my 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 vision and my dream is uh, don't make anybody another yeah so don't this process of othering making and then of course this can mean i make someone else an enemy or something so that's that's one of the i think most important processes within nonviolent communication is is really to 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 transform any kind of enemy images i have to really get back to this uh to this dialogue and to this relationship where it's about human beings meeting accepting that they are, uh, have basically more in common yeah more in common in the sense of they both have we both have the same basic human needs and i like especially the work for example of of william yuri who's a very renowned international mediator has written a very famous book called getting to yes where he says and that's for me a different way of uh, kind of framing what 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 we intend to achieve with nonviolent communication he says like it's all about being soft on the people and hard on the problem i think it's a different way of saying like gandhi said like like uh, putting together love and truth yeah truth problems need kind of hard facts and truth and to really uh, get in contact or to really go forward or find solution we often need uh, this this um, quality of being soft on the people yeah and the second thing, and that's a, uh, an expression which William Urey phrased, yeah, this, the third side. I think in conflict situations, taking the third side is very important, which means, uh, so like, like I, can, I can see where whatever conflict situation there is, I can, I can see the human beings on both sides, human beings with their pain with their feelings with their um, needs so that i don't be so that i don't reinforce any polar polarizations and become basically by doing this more more part of the problem as a kind of part of any solution that would be kind of non, non, non-violent communication really to come back again and again to remind myself what does it what do I need to see the other the other to see this other human being really as 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 a human being again yeah and in a conflict really to see both sides and of course that's not that's not easy hard on the problem soft on the people but but I think that's that's probably yeah what 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 mediation work or or what uh, contributing to conflicts through on nonviolent communication is is probably uh, advising yeah? and um, I want to stop by saying of course all of this what I said like really applying non nonviolent communication. And also these principles, how to live, and we see really, it's of course not always easy. And I think it's 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 in many situations it's it's anything else than easy. And it needs a lot of support, needs a lot of empathy for myself, needs a lot of support from other people who who listen to me in a particular way. Yeah, who listen in a particular way, meaning really to to help me to. To come closer to my to my needs to 
to what I need behind what I what I'm just in, expressing. Yeah, so that's it for the start. Oh, there's there's one more one more thing I want to share, which which came immediately into my mind when I uh, was asked by Pauline to to do this presentation, which was a situation I I experienced a couple of years in in some conflict zone, and I wanted to share this as something, um, yeah, showing my my passion or my vision. Um, as I said, a few years ago, I was, I was in a conflict zone. And one, one of the days I was there, four people died close to where I just have been. I came back, I, I kind of passed this place, and then I came back and I've seen that there were kind of lots of policemen and, and there was a lot of trouble. And I heard afterwards that four people were killed in, in some uh, confrontation in this place. And afterwards, I, I looked in the newspapers uh, what was happening there, and 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 I was I was very, yeah, basically I was I was shocked basically that I've only found uh, newspaper reports which kind of uh, either they were talking about one woman who was stabbed, or they talked about three men who were died. Um, three men who died so there was no no news report saying that there were two that that four people were killed and the one report just named or just put the name or i could just find the name of the woman and the other per, people the, the other human beings they didn't appear they were just called terrorists and in the other news reports they were they were called uh, freedom fighters yeah so and, and, and I was really sad to see that there was no one kind of reporting on this as kind of it's about four human, human beings having died on this day. So that every news was only taking one side and um, yeah, basically judging the other or kind of making the other the enemy. And when I experienced that, Kind of, I came close to my to my vision and to my desire, really, to 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 contribute to a different way of uh, dealing with each other and 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 also tell, telling stories and narratives about conflicts. Okay, that's my my personal um, yeah finish up for this uh, presentation. And, and I feel it's very difficult for me a little, little bit just now, like sitting in front of my presentation, not, not seeing anybody of you and how it kind of affects you and, and, and what's kind of, uh, what are your reactions or what do you think about it? What's, what's helpful? So I try to get some more into, into a kind of dialogue or question mode or something. And first of all, thanks for your attention. And I stop the presentation now and give it uh, back to Pauline first. Yeah, super. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. There were no questions so far who occurred in the chat window, but I hope that they will in the next uh, few minutes. Um, I prepared some questions so we can uh, go ahead with them. Um, first of all, I would like to know what do you mean by the third perspective? Yeah, third so, side, he calls it. Yeah. Like, like, like if there are two parties having a conflict, that there's someone not being part of the conflict. Like but a bird. Kind of looking looking like from, a, from a third perspective. Yeah. And kind of seeing seeing both sides as mm. uh, human beings, and of course, I thought about it. I mean, that there are conflicts where it's really difficult not to take sides. And how do you do it? But I think it's basically by being hard on the problem and staying soft on the people. I think that's that's what helps me. Even if I I'm very clear about what I like and what I don't like, and kind of naming and telling the truth, being soft on the people, not making the enemy not making the other the enemy. I think that's the basic idea of nonviolence. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, Gilberto is asking, um, how do you deal with someone who doesn't want to listen to what you have to say and keeping insulting or attacking and how to grab the attention, how to make someone <coughs> listening? Mm -hmm. Tough question. <laughs> that's a difficult question, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's where I, where I kind of... Uh, start by going back to my start of saying who am i to tell you what to do because i can imagine that this is really challenging and difficult situations to to be confronted with someone insulting you again and again and again so first of all my my take would be hey i can i can uh, empathize with how difficult the situation might be to be on the side of kind of listening to or kind of hearing this. And of course, it's a little bit difficult to do, here, to do here live, but that's something I would, I would love to do, to hear a little bit more how, how do you, Tamara, really feel by, by experiencing this. Yeah. But <clears throat> the second thing for me is, my experience also in difficult situations, if I succeed in kind of being more with empathy with other people, trying to understand them, and as I said, it, it, it needs that I got some empathy for myself first, so that I'm kind of, yeah, what, what triggers me has to be a little bit more quiet, but if, I'm, if I really if I really uh, succeed in kind of being more understanding or open without saying I accept what someone's doing. That's a very, empathy doesn't mean that I accept a particular behavior, but empathy means that I at least have this attitude of I want to understand what, your, what, what kind of needs uh, you, you try to fulfill in this moment by insulting me, by not talking to me really. Yeah, so it's perhaps some kind of, um, yeah, it's perhaps some kind of ex expression of kind of saving myself or kind of protecting myself and, and so on. So, but that's my experience. Whenever this, I'm, I'm successful in kind of uh, bringing some empathy to the other person, it changes the whole relationship. And to make it concrete, for example, when, when um, someone is attacking, Lupa, which is an agency in Brazil, they're doing fact checking and um, someone is, um, you know, saying again and again, you are doing fake news, for example, yeah. um, as they do have a president who is also saying um, yeah. the traditional legacy media outlets are doing fake news. So um, perhaps they do have a story, for example, they published a story and um, there are people who are attacking Lupa um, um, regularly and say, you are doing fake news. So how can uh, Deberto concretely react? Is it like, um, I do understand that you are angry um, and what? <laughs> <laughs> or what what yeah, can yeah. what yeah. can be a possible reaction to that because you know like being yeah. attacked is not really pleasant for anyone <laughs> but yeah. um we can like there's the strategy of ignoring it what is like the worst strategy probably um and you can you can um fight back and there would be the third option would be would be you know um, more connected to uh, nonviolent communication to to show empathy and to um, to show up with you know I do understand that you're angry or uh, that that this is something that you uh, was um, um, I don't know um, wondering about or that you uh, do see in that another way or something. Um, but how could Gilberto react if he would do, for example, NVC at that special point? Yeah, that's a really hard question, isn't it? I mean, what, what I see, I mean, what I see is not immediately uh, helpful in this moment, actually, because I think what is, what is needed is, 
is really a, a good support system for, for everybody who is experiencing this. If you experience these insights all the time and every day, you need a really good support network to, to kind of see what you need first. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, I can say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I've had, I've, I've had this 40 times. It doesn't, I don't care too much, but I don't believe. I think it really makes, makes, uh, makes me feel something. Mm -hmm. And I need something first. So that's, that's where, I, where I come to first. It really needs a community support where, where, where people in these situations and really need to, need to have someone who, who listens to them first so that they can kind of look what, what do they need in these situations and, and, and how can they look for themselves and perhaps how can they protect themselves better or how do they... Uh, get support when they need it really when they are in these situations so and in this special and, case i do know that he's exchanging you know his, his experiences with other media startups in brazil as they do have some kind of association of innovative um, um projects and uh, initiatives but um for example um if there's someone who is uh, attacking lupa um, regularly he asks him or her what are your needs or what is the the, the right reaction to that yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's that's what i say i'm 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 not a friend of kind of using particular phrases or kind of mm. something you because it needs to be connected to to where you are mm -hmm. okay. and and my and i think it's not something I I mean sometimes I succeed in kind of saying okay how can I really kind of switch my attention from how does it how is it for me to how might it be for the other side and really kind of mm. somehow react from that side it sometimes might 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 be possible but of course first of all I I need to be somehow connected to what what do I need to be really open to only really be willing to understand the other side? Mm -hmm. As long as I've got the feeling I'm not heard, I'm not understood, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not uh, really well connected to myself, I won't be able to connect to the other one. Okay. So that's, that's, that's just... And then I f think it's, it's the best thing I can do is to say, stop. <laughs> I can't, I can't answer, I can't react. And I know that's not very helpful because sometimes it, it needs some kind of answer in these mm -hmm. situations. But, but that's, that's the only thing which I see really, to look for myself better and to see what, what all these difficult situations really mean for me mm -hmm. to be more and more and the more i do this the more perhaps i can see the other side as just human beings and not as the attackers or something or the people who are insulting me but i can see i'm open to see more what is what is there okay um there's another question by tamara who works uh, for aris um uh, which is an organization based in Amman in Jordan. And she is asking, I'm wondering if you can talk about internal obstacles for achieving empathy and tips to deal with that, especially when the trend is, as you said, to make the other seem like the enemy. So what could be um, strategies or tips for achieving empathy within what, the organization what, what do you exactly mean by internal obstacles tamara challenges i guess like when, like when for, they, when for achieving for achieving empathy when they are occurring so that i'm in the organization like conflicts problems challenges um so that there are some kind of you know different positions and um there are yeah what there's one side there's the other side and don't see each other as enemies but to find a way that uh, is like maximum empathetical 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's where this third side gets so important. Mm. I mean, there are so many conflicts where, where the two people in the conflict, they are not open to for each other at all. And if mm. there's no kind of third side or some kind of consciousness who's, who's able to support and to hear, to hear both sides. So someone who, someone to kind of get to this point, it needs someone who's able to listen to the other. As long as no, if there's nobody able to, to listen or not willing to, I mean, I'm, I'm quite often, uh, people might be in situations and I'm in, in, in a situation where I'm not really willing to listen to the other side. So in this situation, it needs someone from some support from the outside who's saying, okay, what's, what's going on for you? What's going on for you? So perhaps you can say something about the, the external and internal ears, you know, this theory by Rosenberg, what I found really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, like you said, like, 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 like what I said, uh, what I was calling kind of self empathy really mm -hmm. and and uh marsha like uses sometimes the the animal of the giraffe as 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 the um as the animal for for the non-violent communication which has ears like and of course you can you can turn these ears outside towards other people what i called empathy And, and to the inside, like, like uh, self-empathy. I can listen to myself and, and, and my, my thoughts translate them into my needs, perhaps. So, and, and that's, that's very important to see if I, and, and sometimes we say in online communication, hey, I can't, I can't hold these ears to the outside. I mean, they are gone. I'm not open to listen to someone else outside. And of course, when, when I'm in a culture of, like you say, and you said to make the other seem like the enemy. Yeah, that's, 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 that's happening so often. And of course, when I'm in a culture and in a group where, where this is kind of what is, what, what, what do we, that's the way we, we talk with each other, we reinforce this. And as long as there's nobody kind of trying to listen in a different way and kind of asking hey what do we do yeah do we do we see the others as, as still as human beings or do we see them as enemies then we've got a job to do yeah and it's really difficult i can imagine and in particular situations not 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 to see the others who are doing harm or do who are doing something which i really don't like which is really cruel which is really uh doing a lot of different harm really to see the people as human being is very very challenging and needs a lot of support from people who are able to do this to to hold some kind of space for us and and take this third side somehow and to make it concrete for example if there occurs a problem um at Arish, for example um, the first step would be to sit together all together and um, to ask the people what are your needs or what would you yeah, to make to make this process really like like what is happening mm. what is your feelings that they get that the feelings get space as well because yeah. if there's a lot of anger mm -hmm. And all, like Marshall liked this face in this process, which he called like, like, like the other animal for the non-violent, uh, for the not non-violent communication, he'd used, uh, he, he, he used the jackal. Jackal and giraffe are his two symbol animals. And, and then he was talking, sometimes it's good really to, to enjoy the jackal show to know, hey, I've got so many um, judgmental uh, words and expressions for the other side just now and how important it is to, to hear this. Actually, yesterday I, I, was to meet, I went to a meeting in Ravensburg with people kind of interested in NVC and there was one professor who really had a really difficult situation the night before. And we asked him to really 
share his share his Jekyll show, to share all the things he thought about the situation, and we could see how his system relaxed because we were just hearing. We were not kind of saying, yes, you're right, or we were not sympathizing with him. We were listening empathically, just hearing how he feels and what he kind of wished for and what, 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 what of his needs were, were, were kind of behind all this things going on in his head. And this was really kind of calming down the situation. Afterwards, he was much more relaxed, much closer to what he really needed. And I, and I think that's, that's the kind of setting and that's the kind of listening to each other, which is, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit uh, similar to, to couples, right? Yeah. The, that the, uh, it's suggested that they should take at least once a week, 10 minutes each, just to speak out how are yeah. their feelings, what are they thinking about, uh, what are they concerned about, uh, and not um, to speak in between or to judge or to, to say anything, just to listen to. And this yeah. is also what you mean by power of listening. Yeah. Just because this is something what is um, not done that often nowadays, right? <laughs> No, no, I think that's, 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 that's something which, is, which, which really makes a difference if, mm. we, if there's a culture of listening without mm. judging immediately, yeah. really listening, being there, and to be open and honest about mm -hmm. what, what do I really think just now. Mm -hmm. And, and no, no, knowing, knowing that it's not the truth, yeah, yeah, not, not to the other side, but if I get support, talking to someone who's, who's prepared to, to hear this, Even if it's, even if I've got enemy, yeah, if I'm kind of making the other one the enemy, so just, just, just being, being hurt with this, knowing that's not the truth, but that's my, that's my anger. That's my, that's my situation just now. That's what I'm feeling just now. I'm really angry because I, I think this and this, and I look at the situation like this and this. And I think that's, That's so important that this has somehow space, that I'm heard, that I'm really, that I get some kind of empathy I, I really need. Mm -hmm. It's also about wording, right? Just uh, that, you, that you speak that out and that, yeah. you, that the other person does know how you do feel. This makes a huge difference in terms of connection, right? Yeah, that makes the connection. Like, like mm. I feel how you feel and you see that I feel how you feel. Also, there's, there's a connection, really. And that makes a difference, that there's someone who is interested in me and I can't do anything wrong. Mm. That's important as well. That's a moment I don't... And that's important when we do nonviolent communication. Mm -hmm. It's not about doing it right. right. But there's a space where I can... Uh, Mm -hmm. where I can say whatever's on my heart and whatever I, knowing that's not the truth, but I want to be heard with what I'm just thinking, what I'm just feeling. And that makes such a huge difference, which we really can't talk about. That's, that's something you can just experience, really, like how it changes a room, how it changes a situation, when there's a particular quality of, of, of listening, what, what Marsha calls like, high quality empathy when there's really someone not judging and just listening how this changes changes a lot without kind of the outer world hasn't changed but it has changed mm -hmm. so we have like 20 minutes left um, in our webinar if you do have any questions you can uh, whether write them into the chat window Or you can raise your hand and ask uh, the question also um, via audio, via your microphone if you want. Um, and if there are no other questions from the audience, I do have some prepared questions. And one or of them. Or perhaps there, there are some reactions to, to reactions. what you've heard. <laughs> yeah, to what you've heard. That it makes it, does it make sense? Is it total nonsense to you because not practical or whatever? So I would be really interested to get some, some response as well. Like, like how does this land with yeah. people attending this? Yeah, you can also um, give some feedback. If you so want. if there's anything you, you, you react to or, or you, you kind of feel 
strongly about just now mm -hmm. I would be I would be very open to hear whatever it is I would try to kind of take it empathically mm -hmm. and so uh, Thomas do you get the impression that this I would call nonviolent communication a method um, I mean it's it's both isn't it it's it's a kind of process mm -hmm. which you call, can call a method mm -hmm. and it's basically a way towards a certain um, yeah, attitude mm -hmm. or ethic, mm -hmm. because of course they're, they're yeah, it's it's not it's kind of supporting a particular way of life, and and really, it has some kind of spirituality as well. Yeah, really, that it's about all all human beings are equal, and we want to see them as human beings. That's the basis of 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 them. Yeah, of many spiritual or religious thought as well. So it has this aspect as well, where it's about how do we come together, how do we see each other as human beings. And, and if we uh, call it a method, uh, do you get the impression that it is getting more and more popular or relevant, considering all the discussion about fake news and manipulation of public opinion? Do you have right now more I don't, workshops than five years ago, for example? Or I is think it always still, the same? I think it's still increasing mm -hmm. because uh, because there's there's yeah there's there's more more more, more tension hmm. and 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 there's I think more and more people. Um, see that it that it needs some kind of new new way or something. They are looking for how do we go further or how do we kind of provide ourselves with new possibilities and new than we have had before. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know if this is directly connected to anything about fake news. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't be able to to answer that, but I but I think many people see that. That, that they need something and of course like that they want to take it's, it starts by taking themselves more seriously like mm -hmm. their own needs not just other people do with me and I just obey but I want to do my own thing so, so I need to know what it really and I need to listen to myself and I learn to listen others more and more deeply or something and that's that's kind of um, creating deeper connections or Mm -hmm. And of course, people feel that this is something they like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you mention anything that has been changing since 2004 when you were starting with nonviolent communication? What do you mean? I don't know. The theory was changing? always the same. It didn't change a lot during that time. Yeah, I think it has, it has reached many more organizations as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, as kind of as said, it has really changed the field of mediation, I think. Mm -hmm. There's no mediation course without kind of this method of hearing mm -hmm. the needs and, and kind of translating what people say into needs. And, 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 and lately, the last years, it has been more and more important for, for, for companies and organizations. Like I said, like the new work, Frederick Laloux's work, reinventing organization, more and more organizations uh, see that that they need some way of yeah dealing differently with each other and solving conflicts uh, in a different way. So sometimes companies and and organizations really yeah sometimes I know a company in in Berlin they are teach they are teaching every everyone working there basically. Mm -hmm. So they see it it needs this kind of skills to to. Especially if you want to have different kind of leaderships, if you want to have more self-organization, you need people who uh, are more able to express, to express themselves, to hear the other, to find common solutions, and not like of uh, like the old hierarchical leadership, which one says the other obeys. If you want to do something different, it 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 needs different, uh, yeah, different abilities to to really find common solutions. Mm -hmm. And the target group of your workshops are not journalists, basically. Not journalists. We, we found out <laughs> yesterday. I've I've never had journalists never in my workshop. 
Yeah. So, so who, are, who are the most participants? Like, from which fields do they come from? Yeah, most most participants are from from social or kind of education system, but more and more and more from 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 companies, big companies, like company owners, like entrepreneurs. So it's very, it's getting more, it's, it's widening, but yet no journalists in my, in my field. And, I'm, I'm, and I was really surprised and that there's no... More companies because the leadership... Um, because leadership gets a different question. Yeah, self... Changing. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. People want to have a different kind of leadership. And if you yeah. talk, a diff, uh, talk about different leadership, you, you talk about skills in relationship skills yeah. in listening mm -hmm. like like otto sharma says like 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 a theory and new leadership needs a particular way of ability to listen mm -hmm. to other people Gilberto asks uh, we are realizing here in brazil that people's approach to information is more emotional than reasonable on the same as in uh, the United States with Trump. How to break barriers emotionally? Do you have any tips to break barriers emotionally? Can you kind of explain this a little bit more to me or kind of? Yeah, it's like, you know, when we are talking, for example, about, about Trump, um, then yes. it's absolutely clear that he is um, saying not that often the truth. But he is attaching something emotionally uh, at the voters who are uh, voting for Trump. So yeah. he is getting an emotional point, touch yeah. point, I could say. So um, here it's the same, so that the people in Brazil are more emotional than reasonable. And what, does, what would it mean to break the barriers emotionally? Just to... to, to um, I think to achieve these. But to make people. it more reasonable. Uh, mm. Is this what it means? Not that, that people don't stay in this emotional field, but that they, that they are open to they're reason? Getting, yeah, they're getting more reasonable again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How to get them back reasonable? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. I, th I think it's by ah, yeah, okay. how to send the message in an in an emotional way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is something different. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's where where uh, where nonviolent com communication might provide something because because there is this aspect of observation and facts and rationality, but of course there's also the aspect of needs. If we talk about yeah, if if this fact is so and so to say what, what consequences uh, it has for, for people, really, and for what they, what they need to make them visible as human beings with needs and feelings. And to, apart from the rational argument or apart from the, the observations or, or evaluations on that, just to, to make more visible this part of needs and what people need and how we can contribute as well yeah that's the question as well. make you make can you make an example yeah, yeah. um yeah if i if i report on uh, a government decision i can i can make it uh i think i can reach people but i mean how do am i to talk to experienced journalists <laughs> about how to make a story. But of course, I mean, I've, I feel, I, I mean, it's this basic thing which I like in non in communication that we get more open when we see, when we are able to see people with human needs. If, if someone says like, I need something and I need support and I need protection because I'm really in danger, and this is angry, and and this is um, presented. Then I mean, it opens people's hearts, doesn't it? I mean, if this mm -hmm. is seen, if this is shown. So if it's not just a rational thing, but but if it's if it's this this part of where we where we get into, a, hey, I like to, I can f I can I can empathize with. Uh, the person I read about, and I 
ask myself how can I contribute perhaps even mm -hmm. I think um, that, that uh, debate means you know the communication with the audience for example when they published a report um, that the reactions on social media basically you know on Twitter Facebook Instagram whatever uh, whatsapp um, how to react there in the right way if there's a right way um, or to react more emotionally so that you also you know uh, attach the people so that they are not thinking anymore that we are fake news <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean I, I, I would I would love to give this question to the other experts here mm -hmm. as well how do you do this because you are probably all of you have probably these these kinds of questions. How do you mm -hmm. how do you, you send react? the message in an emotional way, and yeah. how do you direct? I th I think what 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 nonviolent communication teaches me that I can't that I can't neglect the emotions. I can't say, hey, just stay rational. Mm -hmm. It's it's hardly mm -hmm. that's hardly saving or solving any problem. So I have to take the the emotion seriously in the way of yes i accept that they are here and i might be able to see what's behind them what's behind the anger what's behind the rage what's what kind of needs are behind it mm -hmm. so then i can more easily connect to the to the human being again if i don't only see the strong emotions mm -hmm. but if i get a little bit more and and i put my attention so what what might be behind yeah mm -hmm. so that's and how can i connect to that the typical answer listen this is not an opinion these are facts data history yeah yeah it's not working i can i can understand that because that's just addressing the 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 rational part and it, it kind of tries to to stay there and 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 it's and it's not it's not a dialogue, it's not listening to the other side, really. If I just say that's how it is, I don't, I don't fully hear the other side. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I don't respond uh, to this emotional part or something. I'm, so somehow I would, I would, I mean, to make it an answer, I would need to, or I would try to kind of how do I, how do I get a connection to the other side? And that's not my just claiming that's, an, that's not an opinion, that's facts. That's, that might be true, but it's not very helpful because it's not the start of a, of a conversation, really, of a dialogue. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's sometimes, the, that's sometimes the, the, the decision one, one has to take. Marshall kind of quoted some some uh, i think it, he got it from somewhere he said do you want to uh, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy if you want to be right you can say i'm right that's the way it is but i won't be happy in this relationship with the other mm -hmm. person so if i want mm -hmm. to have a relationship with the other person and even if i want to convince someone of something i have to have a contact with them so that's the point with connection before correction so I can't correct someone's opinion or say that's, that's the way it is if I don't have a human connection to them. Mm -hmm. And that's a decision, I think. Am I satisfied with, hey, but I'm right? Or am I not satisfied with this position? And then I need to start a more difficult dialogue. And I, and I, and I know, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess a lot of this is taking place uh, virtual. So it's not really face to face and it's not really listening to voices. And I see that that's so much more difficult. A lot of stuff which I'm talking about is of course personal, personal dialogue. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more difficult if you get into, you don't have a human being, you've got, you've got just a computer screen and it's so much difficult to relate to the human being behind these words. If I don't see them, if I don't, yeah, hear them, hear their voice. So that's a really big, I, I see that's, that's, that's really difficult. So my, my question would be many, 
problems probably really need more more personal interaction to mm -hmm. to get some way together we need some some personal contact yeah won't it it i, th I think many it's probably I'll kind of I accept that sometimes on this um, uh, virtual or via digital means it's hardly possible to get to get together really. These startups also experiment with uh, offline events, for example. So okay. people yeah. are gathering, but there do come people, of course, who you know are supporting the startup, who are who are a member or. Who, who, who are friends with uh, editors or something. It's always really difficult to, um, to read these people who have a yeah. different opinion and yeah. um, who are um, attacking these uh, colleagues all the time. But yeah. um, like we, we have um, four, five or six minutes left. If you do have one or two questions, you can ask them right now. This is like your very last chance. <laughs> and um, I, would, I would like to know, uh, Thomas, um, if you could share, you already shared one learning um, in the past few years. Perhaps you have like two other learnings um, that you gained uh, in terms of nonviolent communication during your work. For you personally, that might be helpful also for for the other journalists around the globe. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really big, but make it short. So I think I I don't have a big <laughs> answer on that, but I can I can I can share a little bit, and it's and it's and it's not uh, it's not um, directly. Kind of NVC or not nonviolent communication, but it's kind of um, it, it's kind of bothering me and it's kind of um, challenging me. I mean, I'm I'm more and more kind of um, interested in spaces. How do we bring people together who don't share the same the same opinions? Yeah. And, 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 and there's some hope in this that I've, uh, that there's a German journalist who's kind of sharing and, and kind of collecting all these, all these stories where people who meet, uh, um, come, uh, over their prejudices. So when people meet and there was this thing in Germany, like, like people very different talking to each other and meeting, finding out that they are not as different as they thought. Okay, so we're and that's, talking about the project of Zeit Online. Yeah, Zeit Online, German Deutschland speak. spricht, mm -hmm. German speaks, and, and, and Bastian Bertner uh, kind of collecting all these stories. And I, and I think it's so important if there's really kind of, if, if there's conflict or different sides, that there's some way of bringing people together. And, 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 and meeting bothering me means, uh, then I thought, uh, I mean, in my life, in my work, how do I meet really different people and where do I meet them? And where do I really talk to them? Where do I talk to these? Here in Germany, we've got this new uh, neo, neo fascist party, AFD. I, I've never talked to someone. Mm -hmm. So I've got so many prejudices about them, but I've never encountered one. So I've, I've never had a meeting, a personal meeting, talking, hearing, listening. And, and my sense is how important it is to create somehow spaces where, where people who kind of have these differences, where they really get in contact with each, with each other, this is, somehow, this is somehow the only, that's really the only chance I see like to overcome all these differences. If we really get in contact, see each other, hear each other, in a particular fr framing, yeah, it needs to be secure, it needs to be, uh, yeah, both people need to be willing to do this. But I think that's, that's what I'm, and then this magic of nonviolent communication and seeing each other more and more as human being again can happen. But if, if we don't have these kind of encounters, it's a nice, it's a nice thinking. And what would that change? If you would meet someone, for example, from AFD, what 
would that change for you? How can that help you out in your life? Or what uh, for? Um, what for? Yeah, yeah. Why do? Why should we? Yeah, I think people I, who are completely in another political direction than we are. I think I I I close with one of the things this journalist has written. I mean, he's had contacts with uh, neo fascists. Mm. And he said he's kind of got to know them a little bit, talk to them. Mm -hmm. And they said afterwards they were almost changing their mind and they decided not to meet people outside their bubble again because they know that's, that's threatening for them. They can't sustain their own opinion if they know, hey, the other ones, they are, they are not the enemies. They are not the bad guys. But the moment uh, people are isolated, And, and there's no connection to other people outside their bubble or something. All different, all, all, all things can happen. That's what I, that's what I see somehow. So I can, I can get, uh, yeah, uh, I can get kind of beyond my own prejudices about uh, people voting for a party I don't like. Yeah, perhaps I can see, hey, they've got their, I can, under, I can understand them more. And perhaps I can even kind of show myself and, uh, and, and kind of that they really listen to me, why I don't like this. So someone said, if I want to change someone's mind, I have to know where, where the mind is or what the person thinks. And I have to have a contact that the person listens to me. So otherwise, there won't be any change or any any development or something. Yeah, we talked a lot um, about uh, external um, communication, but as we mentioned in the beginning, of course, NVC is also an opportunity to improve your internal communication. So um, as there are no other questions um, in the chat window, and we have like one and a half hours, I would like to finish the session with the quote of um, Marshall Rosenberg. Um, and this is the goal of uh, nonviolent communication is not to change people and their behavior in order to enforce our will. It is about building relationships that are based on honesty and empathy so that the needs of everyone are ultimately met. So um, yeah, I hope that you got an idea about uh, this, I think, really interesting method um, for internal and external um, ways. And I would like to thank very much our keynote speaker, Thomas Stelling, uh, for your time and for your interesting insights. And also, of course, thank you to the participants for your questions and the uh, lively discussion. I hope you enjoyed our fourth webinar organized by DW Academy and there will be two more webinars in March and also in April. One about working remotely and the other about building a relationship to Facebook. And I really hope to see you soon next time and take care and goodbye. Yeah, thank you very much for being here and listening and sharing whoever shared something. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.